and we're back in the yard so i got no cool call i turned on the unit blower motor kicked on but this isn't doing anything so let's see what's going on so here we go <laughs> All right, so first things first, let's see if we have voltage. The contactor is open, by the way. Uh, and we do have high voltage. Let's see if we're receiving our call for compressor. As it looks like this might be a heat pump. Uh, yes, we have 24 volts coming in. So for some reason, it's not kicking on. I'm gonna throw some gauges on this and see if there's pressure in there. Might be a low pressure trip. Because I'm pretty sure this has low pressure switches on it. All right, well, we have refrigerant we have refrigerant in there, so we got to see what's going on here. Uh, so the next thing is we want to make sure we're receiving 24 volts to power uh, the board. So let's do that. So we're checking from R to C, and I do have 24 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the high voltage so I don't shock myself. All right, so we found this, this these yellow wires here. They're plugged into switch, so I'm guessing that's some kind of pressure switch. And it's currently open, so that's what's preventing our system from kicking on. So, to test that, I have the high voltage off. And since we're being powered by 24 volts on the inside, we'll be able to go ahead and do this test without having to give high voltage. So we're going to go to our switch here, and we're just going to jump it out. And if the contactor closes, that's our issue. I did nothing, so... It might be a lockout, so we'll, we'll have to kill low voltage to the board. Okay, so we've bypassed the pressure switch and it still didn't come on. I have voltage going into uh, the board, but I have nothing coming out. So that tells me that there is an issue with that control board um, or that defrost board. I feel like that's faulty, but also uh, we're not getting any continuity on these on these pressure switches. So that's popped open for some reason. Um, I'm gonna run the unit and see if we have a high pressure situation. Uh, so by doing that, I'm gonna basically jump Y directly to here, which is basically the board out to the contactor. So contactor is now closed. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check the charge, make sure it's not doing anything crazy. Uh, then we'll have to come back with a new board uh, and then figure out what we're gonna do as far as the pressure switch, see which one it is. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Oh, one more thing. I'm gonna unplug the reversing valve. I wanna make sure it's being, it's working properly. So. Yes, all right, cool. So that still works, that's good. Um, what I'm getting at is if it's gonna take us a while to get a board out here, um, I'll probably just bypass this so he at least has cooling and then go from there. So done with that. I'm gonna go ahead and plug all this stuff back in. All right, well, amp draws are normal. Pressures are looking all right-ish. Uh, my target's uh, super heat on this guy is uh, eight degrees. So it's close. Subcoolant looks all right to me. Suction's a little bit on the low side, but I do know that uh, I've been here before and his coil was pretty bad. Uh, it's better, but yeah, it's, it's got an airflow issue. So that's to be expected. So I'm thinking refrigerant charge is fine. I'm not seeing anything high pressure or low pressure. I'm going to locate that uh, that pressure switch to make sure the wire isn't like eaten through or something like that. Because um, maybe it's just the wires broken. Because um, I'm not seeing any reason for it to be tripped. Uh, also, I do have a universal, um, universal defrost board, so we'll probably install that. Uh, but I want to make sure that, that, that this isn't just a broken wire before go that far but yeah I'm pretty sure that this uh, universal or I'm sorry the defrost board is dead because we got a call I bypassed the switch it should have came on should have closed the contactor and never did well I guess by running the unit we got the switch to reset um, but now it's still not coming back on I mean so the contactor should close when I plug this back in and it's not it might be a lockout of some sort it's hard to say Let's go ahead and unplug this. We're gonna unplug the, the 24 volts to the board and the call. Give it a sec. And I'm gonna plug the 24 volts back in first, then the call. All right, so we're gonna plug the 24 volts in first. Okay, board is on. Give it a second. 
We're gonna go ahead and plug in the call. Contactor still not closing. So I'm gonna say the board's bad. All right, so we got approvals. Um, I happen to have one of these on my truck. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. It looks like we're gonna have to run a new uh, sensor. So I've never installed one of these, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the top off. Um, I did offer to do the contactor as well, but uh, he chose not to do that because he's just gonna do this because it is a little pricey. Anyway, I'm gonna get the lid off of this so we can uh, gain access and we're gonna have to replace the defrost sensor. You know, it looks like this one's got an ambient too, so. All right, so there's a high pressure switch. No breaks in the wires. Um, that's our defrost thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead and take this board out. We gotta convert everything over. So this is our defrost wire. So we're not gonna need those no more. So we'll take that out first. All right, so we got our coil sensor, our new one installed right there. We have our ambient sensor kind of hanging out right here. Um, I'm gonna clean all this up later. Uh, so we're not using this. We want to use um, this one right here. So this is our electric strip out. Uh, this is if you're using one of those dial things, um, but we're not doing that. This is our common. This is our R. That's our uh, reversing valve. This is our compressor. And then we don't have a low pressure switch, so we've uh, jumped it out. And then our high pressure is hooked into these yellow wires and then our reversing valve right here. So we should be good to go. Um, and then of course we've hooked up our outdoor fan motor right there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, I, I've, I've depowered it. I've turned off the indoor unit so there's no 24 volts. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the 24 volts, configure it, put everything back together and cycle it. So yeah. Alrighty, so we got our, the indoor powered up. High voltage is still off. We gotta program this thing. Uh, so there's two buttons down there. There's option and select. So we, I think we need to tell it if it's O or B for the reversing valve and all that. So I'm gonna read the instruction manual and we'll see what's up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to push the option button and then it's gonna say hi, or I'm sorry, DO. Okay, and then we hit the select button because this is gonna be uh, orientation. All right, we push it again. There we go. So we've changed the orientation since it's on its side. Okay, and then we're gonna hit option again. That's gonna take us in back. It's got an option for setting the uh, OEM settings. Uh, they're like, like OEM presets. So this, that's this one. So we're gonna hit select. And E is default. Now this is a, uh, what do you call it? A Coleman, which is basically a York. So if you look at our little chart here, uh, York is gonna be six. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, select until we get a six. All right, and then we hit option. That takes us back. Now we go here to defrost, we hit select. Uh, now this is for demand. This is an old unit, so I'm going to put it to timer. Oops. So we hit select, select again, so T for timer. Okay. And then now we need to set the timer. So DC, this is our timer selection, so we'll set that for 30 minutes. So cool, already set. And the rest of the stuff is pretty much done, so now we need to go to R. So this is where we set it to O or B, so it's currently set to O. We're good. Now we are going to go ahead and cycle cooling and see what it does. Alrighty, she's back up and running. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we did have a bad board. You can see here now it's showing cool. So yeah, anyway, the, this is actually the first time I've ever hooked one of these up, so yeah, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have one of these on your truck, so um, uh, just in case you can see it, that's that's the one. I would definitely, I'm definitely going to get another one of these and keep it on my truck. Hopefully the next one actually has instruction manuals on it, but I was able to look them up online. So hopefully this helps you out in diagnosing a bad uh, defrost board because sometimes it can actually prevent it from cooling as you saw. I, just, I have this bag here to keep air, you know, keep it from bypassing. But uh, anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, if you like the tools that I use, go ahead and visit my store and pick some up for yourself. Thanks for watching.